Hello everyone. Today we are going to go through the 2018 maths higher paper. It's a paper one, a non-calculator paper. I'll show you the complete walkthrough about this paper. Question number one. It's all about fractions, adding mixed fractions, and uh, of division of fractions. Um, let me show you the method. Um, this is one of our the method like uh, you can have a different method um, first when we see the mixed fractions trying to change it to a improper fraction by multiply the 2 times 7 is 14 14 plus 1 is 15 over 7 plus 4 times 1 is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 over 4 now we need to talk about the lowest common multiple 4 and 7 you all know it's 28 4 times 7 is 28 so we need to make the 7 by multiplying by 4 to get the 28 so you need to do the same thing for the numerator this side you are timesing by 7 timesing by 7 to get the 28 so the top one becomes 60 here 35 so the answer is 95 over 28 I will leave the answer as 95 over 28 why you can see the second part they say give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form so in the second part they specifically ask for a mixed number so that means the first part you can leave it as it is or you can change to a, a mixed fraction if i'm thinking 28 goes into three times so because 28 3 is 84 so 95 take away 84 is 11 so 3 11 upon 28 also answer correct or you can leave it as a um, improper fraction this one also correct or oh, this one also correct and the second example uh, B part um, if you convert the mixed fraction 5 times 1 is 5 5 plus 1 is 6 6 over 5 divide by 3 upon 4 so you need to change keep flip change so keep the first fraction and flip the second fraction and change the sign so 3 goes into 2 times then the answer is 8 over 5 which you know they have asked for mixed number so 1 3 upon 5 so that is my final answer so the answer for the B is 1 3 upon 5 the answer for the A is you can leave it as it is 95 over 28 or 3 whole number 11 upon 28 question number 2 in a village the number of houses and the number of flats are in the ratio 7 is to 4 the number of flats and the number of bungalows are in the ratio of 8 is to 5 there are 50 bungalows in the village how many houses are there in the village so pretty much this is a straightforward ratio question they have given the ratio of houses to flats is 7 is to 4 the number of flats to bungalow so here flats to B I'm going to show that in the same column so 8 and 5 so all what I want to do is I need to change this two number as a common number so we know 8 can be easily made by 4 by multiplying by 2 here 
so you need to multiply this ratio by 2 so you will end up with 2 times 7 is 14 is to is the common number now is 8 is to 5 so we have found the common ratio for house flats and bungalows is 14 is to 8 is to 5 now if you see the information given is 50 bungalows so 5 to 50 bungalows times 10 so if you times by 10 you get 50 so they are asking how many houses are in the village so you need to times the 14 by 10 so 14 times 10 is 140 so the number of the number of houses is 140 so that is our final answer question number three Renee buys five kilogram of sweets to sell she pays ten pounds for the sweets Renee puts all the sweets into bags she puts 250 grams of sweets into each bag she sells each bag of sweets for 65p Renee sells all the bags of sweets work out her percentage profit so there's no leftover sweets so she's she we need to find out the percentage profit percentage profit means so how much she made profit divided by how much she spent for the purchasing those sweets times 100 let's do this step by step first of all she bought five kilogram sweets so five kilogram sweets mean it's nearly equal to 5000 grams that is a loads of sweets then she's packed them into small bags of 250 grams each so we need to find out number of bags so number of bags she got 5000 grams of sweets each bag she is putting 250 so how many lots of 250 grams in the 5000 so simply divide 5000 divide by 250 and that is 20 bags so each bag she's selling for 65p each so so we need to find out 65p each times 20 bags so it's a simple multiplication if you times by 10 so this is going to be 2 times 10 right so 10 times 650 times 2 it's going to be Thirteen pounds, or you can do as a long multiplication. So, whichever the method you just find out the answer for thirteen pounds is the sale price. She spent ten pounds for purchasing the sweets. So percentage profit is the new minus old divide by old or you can think this is the profit. So how much she made profit. So she's selling it for 13 pounds. She bought it for 10 pounds and the original price is 10 and that lot times 100 for percentage so 3 over 10 times 100 and 
zero zero cancel and 30 percentage is the percentage profit is our final answer question number four a cycle race across america is 3069.25 miles in length Guan knows his average speed for his previous races is 15.12 miles per hour. For the next race across America, he will cycle for 8 hours per day. The first part, estimate how many days Guan will take to complete the race. Okay, the important thing is estimate, so they're not asking the accurate answer. So the estimate means you can round up. So the 15.12 miles per one hour is the actual. For our calculation, I'm going to use 15 miles per hour. In a day, he's doing eight hours. So I'm going to multiply by 8. So 8 hours is 12 to 1 day. So I'm going to multiply 15 by 8. 8 times 5, 40. 4 remaining. 8 times 1, 8, 120. So 120 miles in a day so in one day so he can finish 120 miles now the race is 3069.25 this one also I'm going to be approximate nearly 3000 miles so now how many lots of 120 are going to be in 3000? So that's simple division. So 3000 divide by 120. You can do the short division or long division or any simple method to find out the answer. So I'm going to do the knock the zero, knock the zero. So it's going to be 300 over 12. I'm going to half the 300 is 150 over 6. I'm going to divide both by 3, that is 50 over 2, and 50 half is 25. So roughly, he need 25 days to complete. Question number 4B. Guan trains for the race. The average speed he can cycle at increases. It is now 16.27 miles per hour. How does this affect your answer to part A? So in part A, he roughly took 25 days to complete the race. So the race distance is going to be 3000. Previously, he cycle 15 miles per hour and 15 times 8 and we put 120 and the answer is 25 and now what's going to be happen 3000 over so now it's going to be 16 times 8 so the denominator is going to be a bigger number compared to 120 so the same numerator, but the denominator is getting big. So the final answer is going to be lower than the 25. However, it's a one mark question. You don't need to show all this explanation. Um, all what you want to do is just to show them um, the number of days decrease to complete the race, but the actual method so the number of miles he is running is increases so the denominator is increases so the numerator is same 
so the denominator is increases so when the denominator increases the actual answer previously 25 is going to be decreases so all I'm going to write here this is for my expl explanation to my video so all I'm going to write here to get this one mark says number of days will decrease to complete the race question number five here is a solid square base pyramid v a b c d the diagram is given the base of the pyramid is a square of side six centimeter the height of the pyramid is four centimeter m is the midpoint of bc and vm is five centimeter the perpendicular height of the triangle sideways is five centimeter the first part they are asking draw an accurate front elevation of the pyramid from the direction of the arrow so here what they are showing is the front view is this way so front view means all I can see a line the baseline six centimeter so basically this one is the the baseline I'm going to draw in the square paper here so each square is one centimeter so I'm going to draw a six centimeter means three four five six I hope this is right so three yeah correct then the height of the V the top I can see four centimeter from the baseline so I'm going to choose one two three four so that is the point of V and that is the triangle so this is the front view so in this question they didn't ask for any other view in case if they ask for plan view I'm going to show you that one but this is not a part of this question paper but I'm going to give some additional help for you so three four five six so this is the the base square when you see the square from the top you will see the the border of the square from the top in addition you will see the the triangles the edges so the each triangle connecting line will be seen this is our point V will be see so this is the plan view or the bird's eye view we call but this is not a part of this examination paper I'm giving some additional help plan view means when you see a 3d object from the top this is the plan view but the front view this is the only question they ask for so that is the part of the question Question number 5b work out the total surface area of the pyramid so we have seen the square base pyramid so if you draw the net diagram for the square base pyramid you will end up with a square and four triangles on each you don't need to draw the net diagram for the explanation purpose I'm trying to uh, show the net diagram which will help you to understand uh, the surface area so what we are going to do is we are going to find out the uh, area of one of this triangle and we can times it by four so because we have four triangles on each side then 
we can find the area of the square and add them up. So we have seen the base is 6 cm and the height is 5 cm in the diagram they have given. So the area of the triangle is half base height so half times 6 times 5 so you can easily cut this one 3 times 5 15 centimeter squared so 4 triangles so area of 4 triangles 4 times 15 which is 60 centimeter square so the area of the square so the base is 6 times 6 is 36 centimeter square so the total surface area is 60 plus 36 is 96 centimeter square that is our final answer question number six a pattern is made from four identical squares the sides of the squares are parallel to the axis point K has a coordinate of 6 comma 7 point B has a coordinate 38 36 point C is marked on the diagram work out the coordinate of the C so what we are going to do is here so 6 comma 7 means so the X coordinate from here is 6 and from here to here is the 8 so this is 6 and this is 38 so what is that tells us from here to here the difference between 38 and 6 so 38 and 6 is 32 so the 32 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 squares. So let me uh, draw the lines then you can see clearly. So if I draw these lines. Right, so now we have the 32 from here to here is 32 made by 4 squares. So 32 is going to be divided by 4 which is 8. So each square has a length of 8. So this is going to be 8, 8, 8, 8. So coordinate of C, the X coordinate is going to be measured from the origin until this point is going to be 6 plus 8 plus 8. So the X coordinate of C is 6 plus 8 plus 8 so that is going to be give 22 and now we need to find out the y coordinate y coordinate we know this is going to be a 7 so this length from the origin from the x point is 7 and the height is here 8 then 8 and 8 we need to find out what is this length 
So the total y coordinate 36 is from here to here 36. So 36 is made of 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus something. So we can find out that 1 3 times 8 is 24. 24 plus 7 is 31. So 31 plus something is 36. From there we can find out that is 5. So this length has to be 5. So for the C's Y coordinate we found from the X, this is 7 and 8 and 5. So Y coordinate of C is 7 plus 8 plus 5 which gives 20 so the coordinate of C you can tell 22 comma 20 and that is our final answer question number 7 the shape T is reflected in the line X equal minus 1 to give shape R shape R is reflected in the line Y equal minus 2 to give the shape S. Describe the single transformation that will map shape T to shape S. First of all, we need to draw these mirror lines. The first one is X equal minus 1, which is a vertical line passing through minus 1 in the x-axis. The second line is Y equal minus 2, which is a horizontal line which is passing through minus 2 in the y axis. So, so the first one is the x axis x equal minus 1. The second one is y equal minus 2. So I'm going to label them. So this is x equal minus 1. And the next one is y equal minus 2. And the next I'm going to reflect the shape R on the X equal minus 1. So this is going to be my mirror line. So count this corner is two squares away from the mirror line. So the image is going to be here and the next point is here and the top one three away. So the point is here. So I'm going to draw a triangle. That is the triangle is R. So let me complete the triangle. So that is the triangle R. The shape R is reflected in the line Y equal minus 2 to give the shape S. So now this one is going to be reflected on the Y equal minus 2. So three squares away from the mirror line. So one, two, three, that is the point. And one, two, three, so one, two, three. So this is the point and the top one is Two from there so from here so the image after reflection is going to be like this so that is the shape s now describe the single transformation so transformation we have enlargement translation rotation reflection out of this four transformation this single transformation so this is coming upside down so cannot be translation cannot be an enlargement and this can't be a reflection this has to be a rotation when it comes to rotation you have three things to tell the way they rotate angle of rotation and the point from which point they are rotated center of rotation so here this is coming the opposite quadrant so this is going to be 180 degrees so 180 degrees rotation you can either say clockwise or anti-clockwise it doesn't matter so whichever the way you rotate that shape is going to be mapped to the s but my biggest problem is center of rotation in order to find the center of rotation this is two and three 
I'm just checking this one. This is going to be three and two. So the center of rotation is going to be my, the intersection point of the mirror lines. So this is going to be minus one, minus two. So the shape T is going to be match by rotating 180 anti-clock or clockwise to match to shape S. So the way we are going to write, we need to tell which transformation. We know this is a rotation, so rotation anti-clockwise or clockwise, it doesn't matter. Hundred and eighty degree. Oh, without putting the anti-clockwise or clockwise, you can put rotation one hundred eighty. from the center point so from the point we'll do from the point minus one minus two so the three things important in the rotation the way angle of rotation direction of the rotation and the point so you have given the old three points that is our final answer question number eight the perimeter of a right angle triangle is 72 centimeter. The lengths of its sides are in the ratio 3 is to 4 is to 5. Work out the area of the triangle. So in order to do this one is a ratio together with a right angle triangles properties. So I'm going to uh, draw a right angle triangle. Now the ratio parts is the 3 is to 4 is to 5. So if you add all the ratio, so 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 12. So I'm going to do divide the 72 centimeter into equal parts of 12, which I get 6 centimeter each. So six centimeter means I got three is to four is to five. I'm going to times everything by six. So I'll get 18 centimeter, 24 centimeter and 30 centimeter. These are the three lengths of the triangle. In a right angle triangle, the longest side it's the opposite side of the right angle which is called as a hypotenuse so which in this case is going to be 30 and other two lengths are going to be it doesn't matter where you put 24 and 8 so it's going to be like that so the area of the triangle area of the triangle equal half base times height or base times height divide by 2 so half base is going to be my 18 and the height is going to be 24 so 2 goes into 9 9 times 24 is the answer so 9 times 4 36 3 remaining 9 times 2 18 plus 3 is 2 one so 216 centimeter square and that is our final answer question number nine is all about the index and laws of indices so the first part 36 to the power half so which is same as square root of 36 we know that answer is six second part 23 to the power 0 any number or letter to the power 0 is equivalent to 1 so the answer is 1 the next one work out the value of 27 to the power negative 
two third. When you see a negative power, we need to change it to one over twenty seven to the power two third. The bottom three, this three, the numerator uh, denominator is cube root. and the 2 is squared. So cube root of 27 is 3 to the power 2 so which is 1 upon 9. So that is our final answer. Question number 10. The table gives some information about the heights of 80 girls. The least height, the greatest height, lower quartile, upper quartile, median. Draw a box plot to represent this information. So it's one of the stats question. So you need to draw the box plot. So how to draw the box plot? So you need to draw the vertical lines for the given data. The least height 133, which is 133. So, so you need to draw a a vertical line which is 133 the greatest height 170 which is this one and lower quartile is 145 is 145 and upper quartile 157 And the median is 151. So to complete the box plot, so you connect these lines together with question 10b. Work out an estimate for the number of these girls with a height between 133 centimeter and 157 centimeter. So it's a continuation question from the A part. So I have brought the, the A part question to the side. So we have the data for the table and we have drawn the um, box plot. Now they are asking how many girls are the height between 133 and 157. So let me change the color. So 130 is this value. And 157 is this value. It's the upper quartile. So you can see 157 is the upper quartile and 133 is the lowest value. From the lowest value until the upper quartile, by theory, upper quartile is a 75 percentage of the data and the remaining is 25 percentage. So we know by theory, lower quartile is 25 percentage, upper quartile is 75 percentage. So the total girls we know the start of the question is 80 girls. So out of these 80 girls, 75 percentage of them are, so 75 percentage of them, of 80 are height between 133 and 157 centimeters. So we understand that one. So basically a small a fraction so 75 percentage I would prefer to keep that as a 3 fourth easy to do the question times 8 T is goes 20 20 times 3 is 60 girls are the height between 133 centimeter and 157 centimeter that's our final answer question number 11 a and B are points on a circle, center O. B, C is the tangent to the circle. A, O, C is a straight line. 
the angle ABO is X. Find the size of the angle ACB in terms of X. Give your answer in its simplest form. Give reasons for each steps. So they are asking all the reasons. Um, first of all, it's a circle theorems, circles theorems in GCSE or year 10. The theorem I'm going to use here, a center, if you connect a line from center point to a circumference, that is called a radius. The radius and the tangent are 90 degrees. So this is going to be a 90 degree. So you can state that one. So angle O B C is 90 degrees because tangent perpendicular to radius. They have given ABO is X, so this is X. And uh, you know, this side is a radius and this side is also radius. So triangle AOB is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, O A B is X. So what we are marking is here this also X. So if you think about the triangle A B C this is X and this one is 90 plus X and this one is the question mark this is C and this is A and this is B so ACB if you want to find out the ACB all three angles add up to 180 in a triangle so 180 take away the X and take away the 90 plus X so 180 minus X minus 90 minus X so collecting like terms 180 take away 90 is 90 minus X with minus X is minus 2x so that is our final answer ACB is 90 minus 2x Question 12. Prove that the square of an odd number is always one more than a multiple of 4. So we need to prove algebraically. So odd number, so odd number, the general form of odd number you can write as a 2n plus 1. If you want an even number, it's 2n. So odd number is 2n plus 1. So they're asking you to square them. So 2n plus 1 square. We need to prove the end result is 1 more than a multiple of 4. So 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1. So you need to expand brackets. 2n times 2n is 4n squared plus 2n then 1 times 2n is 2n plus 1 is 1 so 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 so in the first two terms I'm going to take 4 out so n squared plus n plus 1 so this is a multiple of 4 So plus 1 so this one is square of an odd number 
so we have proved square of an odd number equal to multiple one more than multiple of four so that is our final proof question number 13 square root of 5 brackets square root of 8 plus square root of 18 can be written in the form a square root of 10 where a is an integer find the value of a so first of all i'm going to multiply square root of 5 times square root of 8 so which is square root of 40 which can be written as 4 times 10 square root of 4 is 2 square root of 10 I'm going to keep it as it is in the square root of 10 so the next one square root of 5 times square root of 18 5 times 18 is square root of 90 square root of 90 can be written as 9 times 10 and square root of 9 can be written as 3 square root of 10 so you need to add them up 2 root 10 plus 3 root 10 so adding thirds so 2 plus 3 is 5 root 10 so that's what they ask you to write as a a root 10 format so the a is 5 so the a is 5 that is our final answer question number 14 why is inversely proportional to d squared when d equal 10 and y equal 4 d is directly proportional to x squared when x equal 2 d equal 24 find a formula for y in terms of x give your answer in its simplest form First of all, we have to do this in two parts. The first is the relation between y and d squared and the other one is the relation between d and x squared. First of all, y is inversely proportional to d squared. So 1 over d squared. So I'm going to make this as an equation. So y equal k over d squared. I'm going to have a different uh, equation as well so I'm going to call this guy as a k1 so y equal 4 and d equal 10 I'm going to substitute so y equal 4 equal k1 over d squared so 10 squared is 100 so if I cross multiply I will end up with k1 equal 400 Then the equation is y equal 400 over d squared. The second part is d is directly proportional to x squared. So I'm going to make this as an equation d equal k2 x squared. So x equal 2 and d equal 24. So 24 equal k2 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4. So 4 k2 equal 24. k2 equal 6. So you can write the equation as d equal 6 x squared. So we have two equation. This is my second equation and this is my first equation. So in the first equation y and d squared is connected and the second equation d and x squared is connected. So I'm going to be eliminating d squared from the first equation. So for that I need to find out the d squared. So d squared equal 6 x squared the whole thing squared so 6 squared is 36 x to the power 4 
so if I can substitute d squared equal 36 x4 in the first equation so in the first equation y equal 400 over d squared so d squared I'm going to write 36 x to the power 4 they ask they're asking uh, its simplest form so I'm going to be divide both side numerator and the denominator by 4 so I end up with 100 over 9 x to the power 4 that is the y and that is our final answer question 15 there are two parts first one is factorize a squared minus b squared so this is you have studied this one as a dots difference of two squares so the answer is a one mark question so straight away you can write the formula for that so a minus b a plus b so difference of two squares can be written as a minus b times a plus b hence or otherwise the b part is hence or otherwise simplify fully x squared plus 4 squared minus x squared minus 2 squared so you can do in a different way like a, the the longest way is you expand this one and you expand the second one and you take away one from the other so we are going to do it in a different way so we are going to use the first part so first part is this is a and this is b so a squared minus b squared so my a is x squared plus 4 my b is x squared minus 2 right so a squared minus b squared is we have written as a minus b a plus b so i'm going to substitute that a minus b so a minus b means x squared plus 4 minus x squared minus 2 that is my a minus b a plus b is x squared plus 4 plus x squared minus 2 so if i expand this one x squared plus 4 minus x squared plus 2 and in the second bracket x squared plus 4 plus x squared minus 2 x squared and x squared cancelled and 4 plus 2 is 6 times 4 minus 2 is 2 x squared plus x squared is 2x squared plus 2 so if you multiply is 12 x squared plus 12 so you can simplify so that is our final answer 12 x squared plus 1 you can do in a different way but you don't need to show the both way for the exam so as long as you do in one way it's more than enough I'm going to show you sometimes people end up with doing this one x squared plus 4 whole thing squared you need to find out the x squared plus 4 another x squared plus 4 so you are expanding brackets x squared times x squared is x to the power 4 then 4 x squared it is a little bit of long method but I'm going to show you the method 4 x squared plus 16 you will end up with x to the power 4 4 plus 4 is 8 x squared plus 16 that is the first brackets and the second bracket is x squared minus 2 whole thing squared it's the same way I'm going to do x squared minus 2 x squared minus 2 if you expand the bracket x4 minus 2x squared minus 2x squared plus 4 x to the power 4 minus 4x squared plus 4 so we need to take away one from the other so x4 plus 8x squared plus 16 is the first bracket and you take away the second bracket x4 minus 4x squared 
plus 4. So the final answer x4 plus 8x squared plus 16 minus x4 minus plus 4x squared minus 4. So when you are expanding the brackets minus time minus is plus minus time plus is minus. So x4 x4 cancel 8x squared plus 4x squared is 12x squared 16 minus 4 is 12 so you end up with the same answer x squared plus 1 whichever the way you are doing is correct but uh, this is a little bit long way but if you can uh, find out the relation hence means using the first part you can find out that could be the a squared and that could be the b squared so a minus b so you are adding two brackets and you are taking away then you are multiplying again so that is the final answer question number 16 there are only red counters blue counters and purple counters in a bag the ratio of the number of red counters to the number of blue counters is 3 is to 17 Sam takes at random a counter from the bag the probability that the counter is purple is 0.2 work out the probability that the sam takes a red counter so inside a bag as a red counters and the blue counters and the purple counters so the total probability of all three counters has to be one so probability of taking a, a purple counter is 0 0.2 so if i take away 0 0.2 from 1 so 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8 so this is the probability of taking a blue or red so they having the the counters are not given but the ratio is given so the red counters is to blue counters is 3 is to 17. So total is 20 parts. So 20 parts is 0 0.8. The probability of having the 20 parts is 0 0.8. So one part is 0 0.8 divided by 20 so this is a non calculator paper how to divide by 0 0.8 by 20 so you can divide 0 0.8 by 10 first so which is 0 0.08 then by 2 and that gives 0 0.04 mm -hmm. or you can divide 0 0.8 by 20 then you will end up with 0 0.04 straight away. So whichever the method you did, 0 0.04 is one part. They are asking work out the probability that Sam takes is a red counter. For the red counter is uh, three parts. So three times 0 0.04, which is 0 0.12. So the answer for taking a red counter is 0 0.12 that's our final answer question number 17 is a quadratic factorization and algebraic fractions so if you have a common bracket so you can cancel so first of all we have to factorize 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 so you need to multiply the coefficient of the x squared by 3 so 3 times 3 is 9 so what are the factors of 9 so 1 times 9 3 times 3 that's all the factors of 9 so which factors gives taking away gives 8 so 9 take away 1 is 8 so this is the suitable factor and this is not suitable but I need to get minus 8 so I need to give the minus 9 and a positive 1 so in order to factorize this one I need to open bracket and close brackets 
So 3x squared mean 3x for the start and I can put plus 1 here and minus 9. So you can simplify any of these brackets. 3x plus 1 cannot simplify so I copy it and these both numbers can be simplified by 3. So this 3 and this can be 1 and this is going to be 3. So this bracket is going to be x minus 3. So the second, the denominator, 2x squared minus 6x, I can factorize taking 2x out x minus 3. So we have done our factorization. So we are going to come back to the question. So 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 divided by 2x squared minus 6x. We can write the top numerator part as 3x plus 1 x minus 3 and the denominator part as 2x x minus 3 x minus 3 x minus 3 cancel so the answer is 3x plus 1 over 2x that is our final answer question 18 here is the graph of y equals sine x for minus 180 between minus 180 to 180 on the grid sketch the graph of y equals sine x minus 2 for the same range so this is basically graph transformation. So y equal fx of the graph is given. So y equal f of x graphs minus 2 is the question. So the entire y equal fx graph is going to be moved downwards by 2 units, minus 2. So all the y coordinates are going to be take away 2 and the graph is going to be shifted two units so this minus 180 is going to be two units it's going to be new position is this and this is minus one minus one is going to be shifted to minus three and the zero point is going to be shifted to minus two and this one point is going to be shifted to minus one and zero is going to be shifted to minus two so the graph is going to be the exactly same y equals sine x graph. It's going to be shifted two units. So that is our final graph. So it's moved two units, right? That's our final answer. Question number 19. The point P has a coordinate 3, 4. The point Q has a coordinate A, B. A line perpendicular to PQ is given by the equation 3x plus 2y equals 7. Find an expression for B in terms of A. So first of all, I need to do a, a rough sketch so this is PQ and a perpendicular line for PQ. So this is P, this is Q. So P's coordinate is 3 comma 4 and the Q's coordinate is A comma B. A line perpendicular to PQ. So the line, this one is 3x plus 2y equals 7 so it's 90 degree between these two lines so first of all I need to rearrange this 3x plus 2y to get the y equal mx plus c format so 3x plus 2y equals 7 so 2y equal minus 3x plus 7 so we divide everything by 2 so y equal minus 3 over 2x plus 7 over 2 so this 
coefficient x coefficient is the gradient m1 so the gradient m1 is this one if this line's um, gradient is minus 3 upon 2 means the gradient of pq is negative reciprocal so gradient of pq it's going to be 2 upon 3 because it's minus 3 upon 2 perpendicular gradient is 2 upon 3 so we have two points p and q so p's coordinate is 3 comma 4 and q's coordinate is a comma b so gradient 2 over 3 equal difference of y so difference of y means you can simply label them so this is going to be x and this is going to be y and this is going to be x and this is going to be y so difference between y so b minus 4 divided by a minus 3 so if you cross multiply 2a minus 6 equal 3b minus 12 so in the question they are asking make the b as a subject in terms of a so 3b equal 2a minus 6 plus 12 so 3b equal 2a plus 6 so if you make the b as a subject b equal 2 out so a plus 3 over 3 so you can leave this one as it is that is our final answer question 20 n is an integer such that 3n plus 2 less than or equal to 14 and 6n over n squared plus 5 is greater than 1 find all the possible values of n so we need to simplify the both inequalities separately so the first inequality is 3n plus 2 less than or equal to 14 so i'm going to take away 2 both sides so 3n less than or equal to 12 i'm going to divide by 3 both sides and n less than or equal to 4 so this is the first solution for the one of the inequality so the possible answers for n is can be 4 can be 3 can be 2 can be 1 can be 0 can be minus 1 and so on right so the second part of the question is another inequality we need to solve so 6n over n squared plus 5 greater than 1 so I'm going to multiply by n squared plus 5 because it's a positive number so n squared is a positive plus 5 is a positive number so you can multiply both sides by n squared plus 5 so you end up with 6n n squared plus 5 so n squared plus 5 is a positive so you can say positive number so now I'm going to take the minus n squared this side and minus 5 this side. So I end up with minus n squared plus 6n minus 5 greater than 0. So basically I'm arranging all the elements to one side and minus n squared I'm going to be multiply all the terms by minus 1 
So when you multiply an inequality by a negative number, the inequality sign will change to opposite. So this will n squared minus 6n plus 5 less than or less than 0. So factorize this one. So n and n. So factors of 5, 1 and 5, add them up. 1 plus 5 is 6. So n minus 1 and n minus 5. So in the quantity graph, 1 is one of the solution. 5 is one of the solution. If you're not understanding this one, n minus 1 equals 0. So n equals 1. So that is one of my solution. n minus 5 equal to 0 n equal 5 that is another solution but the value less than 0 so that means below the x-axis so that means the y value is going to be all this value below the x-axis so the n has to be between 1 and 5 for this inequality so the solution for the second inequality is n is between 1 and 5 so the possible answers for this one is 2 n can be 2 n can be 3 n can be 4 so 2 comma 3 comma 4 so if you combine together so both the inequality the final answer is going to be n is going to be greater than 1 or less than or equal to 4 so the possible answers are 2 3 and 4 that is our final answer